Without a good tracking, you are basically blind because you can't monitor your Shopware store's success. One of those tracking tools is Google Tag Manager and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can configure it. Have fun! Welcome ladies and gentlemen to another tutorial. My name is Alexander Barton from Shop Studio and in this tutorial I want to show you how you can configure the Google Tag Manager for your Shopware store. Let's jump into this tutorial. Here we can see the store page of a Google Tag Manager app. This Google Tag Manager app, maybe you know it already, was created by our agency. And the good thing about this Google Tag Manager app is that it makes it really easy to configure the Google Tag Manager and it's compatible with a self-hosted version as well as the cloud version of Shopware. As you can see, this one is a paid plugin, thus you have to buy it first, you have to add it to the shopping cart, then you have to purchase it and afterwards you can install it. In my case, I have already purchased this app. Thus, I can go to the Shopware administration. This is our entry point in almost every tutorial. As you can see, if I go to the extensions, then to my extension, here at the bottom, no, at the top, I can see the Google Tag Manager. Do not forget to install it and do not forget to activate the app. Okay, I think configuring the Google Tag Manager, at least the first part from the shop website, is pretty easy. You have to go to the three dots on the right side, then you go to configuration and you can see three options. You can see the option of the setting to enable the tracking, to set the container ID and this is a great tool for debugging purposes to enable Pexel event debug in the JavaScript console. Now we have to go to the Google Tag Manager to create a new container. And with this container, we get the container ID, which we can insert here. I'm now located in the Google Tag Manager. And just one quick note, this is a free service, so you don't have to pay for it. Thus, it's a nice tool, but maybe a little bit complicated in the handling. I'll show you something great later, because we have already created a nice template for you. The next step is to click on those three dots here and to create a new container. We name the container, for example, maybe the name of a website. Okay, the target platform is our case web. And now we can click on this button to create it. We wait a little bit and now we can see the tracking code. And maybe you already know that you can here, for example, already see the Google Tag Manager container ID. This is required for our case. But it's also possible, for example, to see it here and we can go to the admin as well. Now we go back to the Shopware administration. We insert the container ID. We enable the tracking and we click on save. Now it should work already. We can go now to the storefront, refresh the page. We check if the cookie consent um, is available for the Google Tag Manager. So this is the case. So we activate it, we click on save, and now the tracking is enabled. So I can go to, for example, to the detail pages or to the listing pages, and some events uh, should be submitted to the Google Tag Manager. But they are not processed, so this is a difference. I have one nice and valuable tip for you. If you're not sure if the debugging is working, you can go to the settings again and enable pixel event debug in the JavaScript console. This means that if you go to the browser or the JavaScript console and click on refresh, I can now see ah, exact events which are pushed to the Google Tag Manager data layer. And for example, if I click on this event, I can see that the name is Shop Studio Google Tech Manager Cloud View product list. And there's already some data included in the event as well. For example, in this case, the currency or the products ID of a listing page. And if I go now to the main product, I can see that the view product event was pushed to the data layer. And if I click on add to shopping cart, I see more events now. And this is really a great tool. But if you don't need it, um, do not forget to deactivate because maybe it's maybe strange if some customers see that they are like tracked all the time. So I think it's not really good. And sometimes people forget it. The first part is now done. This means 
that the events are pushed to the Google Tag Manager data layer. But they are more or less useless or not really the uh, desired result we want to get because the Google Tag Manager is responsible for more or less redirecting the events to the right or correct platforms, for example, Google Analytics or Facebook or Hotjar or Google Ads. This means we have to go back to the Google Tag Manager again. Now we click here on Workspace. And the next step would be to create all the tags and all the triggers and all the variables required to connect to those platforms. For example, in case of tags, I have to click on new tag. Then I have to check the tag configuration. For example, I want to create the configuration for GA4. Then I have to set the measurement ID. I have to define the triggers, but variables are required too for the data layer. So we can pass some variable attributes like the price of the card values, for example, in case of the add to cart event or purchase event, um, the transaction ID and more. And this is really a complicated process. That's why we have decided in the past to create a ready template for you. And you can download those, this template for free and install it in your Google Tag Manager container. To find this template, we have to go back to the uh, store page of the Google Tag Manager app. Now we click on installation manual. We click on this link here. This is the link to the documentation. Here you can see the documentation and there's an entry called setup. And here you can see you can download the GTM template in version uh, 1.1.0. You click on this download here and either the download automatically starts or you have to create a file with the same name, for example, GTM template, the version and .json and copy and paste all the content of this file or of this new, um, new page into this file. It really depends on your browser and your plugins what is possible. I have created the file and copied the content into it. Now I go back to the Google Tag Manager and now we can go to the admin again. And here you can see the option to import a container. Click on it. You have to choose the newly created file or the downloaded file. Now you choose the workspace for a newly created container. You can choose the existing one, the default workspace and choose an import option, the override. The nice thing about the import, you can see that this import will create 38 tags, 11 triggers and 89 variables. And this is a lot if you Working with Google Tag Manager, there's really effort put into this container template. We will now click on confirm and we can see now we have created all the tags and all the triggers and all the variables. And I can really recommend to go to the folders. Basically, these are the tags, triggers and variables put into folders. And you can see here all the variables, triggers and tags, for example, for Facebook or for Google Ads or for Google Analytics and more. If we go back to the documentation, we can see now that the next step would be to change the tracking IDs of a value change it. This means that there are some basically, or I think almost every time variables, let's say for Google Analytics. And we have here, for example, the tracking ID for Google Analytics. And you have to change this value with a tracking of the of your Google Analytics account. In case of Facebook, this would be the pixel ID. And for Google Ads, I think there's more to it. We have, for example, the conversion ID and the conversion labels for the most important events like add to cart, purchase, view item and more. And we have a dynamic remarketing as well. Here, you only need the conversion ID of your Google Ads account. Hotjar is included as well and Pinterest too. And here you can see you have to change the site ID and the tag ID for Pinterest. In this tutorial, I won't show how to find all those IDs because I think this is a different topic. But if you're interested in a more or a better tutorial, just leave a comment below. We have imported now the container, so this is very easy. We can now click on Submit and we publish the container. This is another important step. Perfect, we have published the container. This means 
that the Shopware store and the Google Tag Manager are now connected and everything should work by now. We can now go back to the main product and maybe you will see some errors now. For example, a hotjar can't be loaded because the value still changes and the other platforms as well. But the Google Tag Manager tries to load it. So if you insert the correct IDs, this will work. One extra tip for you. There's another way to debug the Google Tag Manager container and all the events and data layer and variables and more. You have to go to the workspace and here's a button for preview. You can click on it. The next step would be to enter the URL of your Shopware store. You paste it and now we connect to our store and you can see your store now, but on the bottom right side, there's a tag assistant. And with this tag assistant, you can see all the uh, events and you know triggers which were fired. If I click for example on clothing, here go back to the Google Tag Manager and here I can see all the basically events and triggers which were fired. For example the initialization event or the container loaded event or one of um, the custom events, the product list event with all the variables which are available. So this is a really detailed view of basically everything related to the Google Tag Manager. Okay, that's it for the tutorial. Hopefully you have learned a little bit and maybe you now have a working Google Tag Manager in your Shopware 6 store. If you like this tutorial, do not forget to subscribe to this channel or leave a comment below. And as always, we see us in the next tutorial. Bye.